Hi guys, this is Tana from Proverbial Homemaker. So today I woke up with a bit of a head cold. You know, you can start to feel it coming on in your throat and in your head. And I had a rough night for probably the past three or four nights for various reasons, kids and not feeling quite well and pushing it a little bit too hard basically. And you know as well as I do that when you try to burn the candle at both ends, you end up getting sick. So with, it's November right now, so with cold and flu season kind of rushing at us, and I realized, you know what, we ran out of elderberry syrup a while ago, and we could really use another batch. And I have a recipe on my blog, and I'll leave you the link for that. And it's a recipe that um, we tweaked a little bit from the ones we'd found before, because my kids didn't like the ones that, uh, that I tried before. Um, and they were just too strong, it was too much for them, and so I adjusted it mostly by taking out the ginger and adjusting a few of the other ingredients um, to make it a little bit less intense for them, and it still seemed to work really well. So that is what we're gonna make today. I did decide that I would like to have the ginger in it, so I'm gonna set aside a little bit after we make the initial batch and put some ginger in it so that I have that on hand for me and see if the other kids enjoy that too. So I have my daughter with me today and we're gonna go ahead and make this, but the, the um, catch here, I suppose, you could call it a catch, is that I am going to make this in the Instant Pot instead of on the stove top because on the stove top, it usually takes about an hour of simmering, but we are kind of in a hurry because my husband just left with the kids to the library and he really is insisting that I rest so that I can, you know, nix this cold early and, you know, be ready to take care of the kids and the house and the homeschooling and all those sorts of things. So he's like, he insisting that I rest, which I appreciate. So we're gonna do this in the Instant Pot and my daughter, Samantha Lane, is gonna help us. And, um, oh, let me share the recipe with you real quick. So now you know why I look like I'm exhausted and just woke up and just showered is because I, that's exactly right. <laughs> and I don't feel so great. Okay, so the recipe is two cups of dried black elderberries. And I just get these from Amazon, um, but you can also get them from, um, what's it called? Uh, I can't remember a name. There's a few different places where I've purchased dried elderberries. And you can use fresh elderberries as well, but I haven't done that before. So I just use the dried elderberries. Um, I would probably double the amount of elderberries if you're using fresh rather than dried. Um, and then four cups of water, three cups of raw honey. Now we usually um, buy big jars or gallons of raw honey locally, but we're out of that. So I just bought some raw honey from the local Walmart and we'll just have to make do with that. Um, but it is important to get the raw honey because it has, you know, things in it that really help not only with allergies, you know, but it really helps with your immune boosting system. And so it's important to get raw honey, not just the regular commercial kind. Um, or processed kind, I should say. And then one and a half tablespoons of ground cinnamon. You can just use a couple cinnamon sticks, probably three or four, uh, but we use ground cinnamon. One cup of raw apple cider vinegar. So this is, again, raw apple cider vinegar with the mother, mother culture in it. And then the, um, the ginger is optional, and this is what I excluded because my kids, uh, didn't enjoy it, but you can either throw one inch of fresh ginger in there or you can use a, t a teaspoon of um, ground ginger. And in most of recipes, you'll see that you put the ginger in in the initial cooking process. Because I'm doing it after the fact, I'll probably do, you know, a fourth of a teaspoon of ground ginger for a, um, a smaller portion just for myself and put it in after when you do the raw honey. All right, so let's go ahead and make our elderberry syrup. All right, so we're going to make our Instant Pot um, elderberry syrup that kids like and so I have my lovely assistant here Samantha Lane say hi Samantha hello okay so like I said we bought this we bought a large bag on Amazon and I'll leave you guys the link for that there are their um, organic dried elderberry black elderberries okay um, and as I said you could probably just I haven't done this before but my guess is you could probably just double the amount of elderber elderberries if you were doing fresh we have, it calls for two cups, and we have a little bit more than that probably, but we're gonna go ahead and just use it all up because I have another bag too, and hey, why not? So we're gonna wing it just a little bit, but I wanted you guys to know what the, the real recipe is so you know how to make it work. Samantha, go ahead and start measuring that so we know how many elderberries we put in. Make sure you fill all the way up to the top, and then go ahead and put it in the Instant Pot. We love our Instant Pots. I have two of these bad boys. This one is, these are both six quarts. They didn't have the eight quarts when I originally bought them. So if you're a large family mama like me, 
then I do remember, I do recommend getting the eight quart, but you can still fit like a whole chicken in here. So I often have both going multiple times a week. One yep, cap. that works. So go ahead and dump it in. And this is the raw honey I got just from Walmart. Um, but you, like I said, try to find a place where you can get local raw honey. Um, a lot of homeschool groups on Facebook, if you have any, you can ask there and they'll find them. Or often there's homesteading groups, like here in Oregon, we have a homesteading group that's on Facebook. So you can ask in there. Um, we have a local stand up here in Oregon near us where um, this family, this older couple sells giant gallons and that's what we usually get or we have a friend up in Washington who's a beekeeper so we'll get it from him. But we're out, so we need, mama needs to go to the farm stand. But in the meantime, we're gonna go, you can go ahead and use all of that, sweetheart. And if there's stems, you don't have to worry about those too much. Um, Ooh, they'll strain, it's okay, anyway. don't worry about it. Just dump it all in. So is that two cups or three? That was two cups. Oh, good, perfect. So I guess we will stick to the recipe, which is usually not <laughs> how I roll. Okay, so you do two cups, black, dry black elderberries, four cups of water. I'll do this one. So we've got four cups of water. I'm always asked about this. It's really cute. It's a pioneer woman thing, um, but it does four cups. So we'll pour that in there. Elderberries smell really good. Also at Walmart. I sound like an, I'm an ad for Walmart today. <laughs> Okay, and then three cups of raw honey. So you got your cup. Let's go ahead and spray it with some olive oil spray just so that the... Um, it doesn't just stick inside the Yeah, so the honey will come out easier and it'll be easier to clean later. Go ahead and start doing three cups of honey. Or no, excuse me. I don't know why we're doing this yet. You actually don't want to put the honey in during the cooking process. I have that in my recipe, but, you know, I spaced out there for a minute. You wanna put the honey in after it's cooked and has cooled down to room temperature because otherwise if you cook the raw honey, it will kill all of those good things that are in the raw honey that you wanna keep. It's the whole reason you bought the raw honey. So don't put that in. You do wanna put in one and a half cups, ground, or one and a half tablespoons of ground cinnamon. Mm -hmm. So this is a tablespoon. Mm -hmm. So one and a half tablespoons of ground cinnamon. You, this is also when you would put in the ginger if you wanted to, if, if you wanted the whole batch to have ginger. And like I said, it would be one. Three? Um, no, one and a half tablespoons. I should probably do this. So, yeah. Yep. Just like that. And then you pull it out to, to level it and go ahead and put it in there. One. And then go to the half. Yeah, right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's well, half teaspoon. Mom, Can you let go for a sec? There you go. Right there, this one, this one. Um, so you could use like a half inch of peeled fresh ginger or you could use, uh, or a whole inch of fresh peeled ginger or you could use a half um, or a teaspoon of powdered ginger. But we're not doing the ginger this time because the kiddos don't like it. So, <laughs> and then you put in the one cup raw apple cider vinegar. So this is the apple cider vinegar we use. It's Bragg Organic. Um, you can see there it says with, with the mother, unpasteurized. With so the mother. go ahead, here, let's use this one. Go ahead and do one cup of that. Put one cup in there. Use it all up pretty much. Oh, we'll still have some left. I like to put a splash of apple cider vinegar in my water and make sure I use a straw so I don't get on my teeth, but um, that does help me a lot. In fact, I really should start doing that again. It's easy to forget to do that. Go ahead and pour it in. Wait, I didn't get all the way up. I totally okay. just did half a cup. That was a little, I didn't do that. Um, so we're going to put all of that in the Instant Pot and set it to seven minutes on high pressure. And then when it's done, we will, go ahead, we'll do a quick release and um, open it, turn off the warming feature, and basically let it cool to room temperature. And then once it's cooled to room temperature, we'll add the honey and that smells really good separate right a piece out. Yeah. Here, let's get a spoon and mix it up a little bit. Oh, I thought you were going to say taste it. I'm like, you mix it? No, <laughs> we're not going to taste it. Yeah, get it mixed up just a little bit. But it's turning orange. I don't know how necessary that is, but it makes me feel good about life. All right. Yeah, it's because of all that cinnamon. This. The cinnamon is 
some of the best part. You could also add a little bit of vanilla in if you wanted, um, but I just like to keep things simple. Some people put like lemon zest, all sorts of crazy things. <laughs> not, not crazy, I'm sure they're good, but like I said, I like to keep things simple. All right, so you set it for pressure cook, high, and um, seven minutes. Okay, so when it's done, we will quick release it and then we'll show you guys how we put in the honey and separate out some for ginger after it's cooled to room temperature. All right, so the Instant Pot has finished. We just did a quick release and now I'm going to strain. You'll want to have a big pot and make sure if you have a colander with small holes so that you know more of the little bits don't fall through. Um, if you do have a colander that has bigger holes and you want to make sure it's more strained so there's no little bits in there, because sometimes kids can get a little finicky about that stuff, you could line it with cheesecloth or some um, white coffee filters and that should work just fine, or some unbleached coffee filters. So we're just going to drain it, and then I'll let you take a I look at a it. <laughs> it's yeah. It's boiling. It's like... Yeah, pop, it's... Pop. I need some pot holders, obviously. <laughs> so it's not just... Oh! <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I'm not super woman, right, Samantha? <laughs> All right, so just be careful. It's very hot. Obviously, when you're doing the quick release, make sure your face and your hands and all that are away from the steam. So you can get that all out there and let it drain. I like to get all of the elderberries out and into the strainer so that it takes a while to... Um, Ooh, I'm throwing the blueberries everywhere. So Are all the little bits and juices get out. Okay, D don't. It's hot. They're not hot. So let it strain them. like that and let it cool to room temperature. And then we'll come back and we'll add the honey and separate some out and add a little bit of ginger. So I just wanted to show you here. So they've all kind of cooked down. They're very hot. You can leave them and just let it strain in there. Um, there's not a whole lot of volume, but it's very concentrated. And so it will, it will take some time to strain out there and get to room temperature. And obviously the, um, the honey will add some volume as well. All right, so now I've had a two hour nap. <laughs> I feel much better. I'm hoping that the elderberry syrup will help and I'm gonna have some homemade chicken broth for dinner and um, I'll be well on my way to feeling better. So anyway, I lost my little assistant. She has a friend over now, so they're playing happily upstairs with the rest of the kids and with daddy. So I, but I thought I'd finish this up for us so you can see what it's like. So I showed you what the cooked elderberries and the syrup look like. Now it's been well cooled for several hours, a couple hours now. I'm gonna go ahead and add honey, and I'm gonna add three cups of raw honey, and then I'm gonna take some out to make some for mama, just specifically, because why not, right? Why not? enjoy the benefits of ginger. Obviously the honey makes it a lot sweeter for the kiddos, but the cinnamon, you know, it has a lot of cinnamon in it. it has a lot of apple cider vinegar in it. It does give it a kick and that's okay. I went ahead and resprayed this so it'll be easier to get out. Should go get a spatula. Anyway, some people use elderberry syrup year round and they give their kids and themselves a little bit of elderberry syrup every day to help boost their immune system. I'm just going to put it all in there. And, um, and that can be one way to go and there's nothing wrong with that. The thing is that I've decided is that, you know, elderberries and Raw honey is not cheap, it's expensive, and so I don't really want to do that all year, plus just the hassle of having to give them, you know, elderberry syrup all year, I don't know, it's just one more thing for this busy mama, I just couldn't, couldn't see doing that. So instead, I wait until I just start to see symptoms in somebody in the family, so like myself, 
I could have probably started yesterday, which is why I realized I needed to um, get this made. For myself, um, I started having symptoms. So I start taking a tablespoon every day. With As a person who has symptoms, I take a tablespoon every day, about every hour and a half to two hours. And that really does seem to help a lot with knocking down the symptoms and helping to recover more quickly. Um, if I catch it early enough doing that and then um, using my immune strength essential oil roller from RMO and um, gargling with salt water, actually, if you're getting, if you're starting to feel like a little yucky here. Those things are what I try to do when I start to feel a little bit of symptoms coming on. And that really does usually help to knock it down entirely. Not always, but often. And then if I do it afterwards, after I'm starting to get symptoms, it does at least seem to help lessen the symptoms and help things to kind of resolve quickly. So as a person who has having the symptoms, that's what I would do for myself. And then for everybody else in the family, now that somebody, me, is starting to feel sick, the rest of them, for the kids, I would give them one teaspoon um, maybe two or three times a day during the day. Just to try to help them, you know, avoid this. If they're starting to feel sick, I give them that. Um, if nobody else is having symptoms, I'll just give them, you know, a teaspoon maybe once or maybe twice a day. But once they start actually feeling sick, I put them on the hour and a half to two hours of a teaspoon a day, or a teaspoon every hour and a half to two hours until they're feeling better. I hope that made sense. I'm a little obviously groggy from my nap. So the blog post I shared with you guys in the comments, it's, um, it has all this information, but basically I keep the jar in um, the refrigerator. I tend to use like a pla set of plastic spoons I just keep nearby so that I don't want, f so like for example, I'll take, uh, you know, my tablespoon of um, elderberry syrup, I don't want to share my spoon with a kid who isn't sick. So I will get a different spoon for each of them and just use plastic spoons. That's the way I do it. I don't know if that's necessary. That's just what I do because it seems to make sense, especially if you're giving them that and then putting the spoon back into the jar to pull it out. Uh, but you figure out what works for you. Anyway, it does seem to keep really well. So now I'm going to take out a little bit just for me. So that I can add back in the ginger. I think that's probably enough. Making a mess as usual. <laughs> I'm never gonna be a gourmet cooking show. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> never gonna be a gourmet anything. So I think, let's see, I have about a half a pint. I think I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make it too strong. I think I'm gonna put a fourth of a teaspoon in there. It'll still be plenty strong of ground ginger. A while ago, I, I have this daughter who's constantly getting coughs at night. Just, it seems so random. She'll be coughing and coughing and coughing and keeping herself up and coming into my bed and keeping me up and keeping her sister up. And um, I came across, I wanted to find like a cough syrup remedy. And I came across, uh, and I didn't have any elderberry syrup left, right? So that's what I usually use for cough syrup. Um, and I actually have a recipe on my site, and I'll leave you guys a link, for cough drops made um, in the freezer. And you can make these little gummy cough drops. Um, but I didn't have any of those either. So I was totally unprepared. <laughs> so I do what every mama does, and I check the internet. And I came across this post from Deep Roots at Home. Um, you guys may have heard of her. I like her things. Um, and she had a homemade recipe for cough syrup that... I mean, if this seems strong to the kids, that one will knock them down. 
you know, with the strength of it. But my daughter was just so frustrated and sobbing because she couldn't sleep and was coughing and coughing. And so I went ahead and make it. I'll leave you guys a link for it so you can check it out. But it has like, I think it's like cayenne pepper and ginger and apple cider vinegar and some honey and maybe lemon, I think. And I just mix it up on the spot. And I've done it three times now. And every single time it totally works. She chokes it down, but she knows that it works. And so it's worth it. And um, she's asleep within an hour and doesn't wake up until the next morning. So um, I'll leave the rest of that. But using something like that along with elderberry syrup every, you know, hour and a half to two hours, giving them good homemade chicken broth or chicken noodle soup or things like that, or even the store bought if you don't have it on hand. I mean, you know, we're all busy mamas. And then using the immune strength for the kids, I use immunity essential oil. Let me show you guys. I'm pretty sure I have mine over here. This is the one I started using. So this is immune strength from RMO. This is what I use. Can you see that? This is a roller bottle. This is for kids 12 and up, so it's for more for adults. But they have a one called immunity that's the same thing. It's in their kids line. So this is something I do use year round. And so if we're going to church, I'll put, put the immunity on the kids and this online as much as I can remember uh, before we leave and when we get home. And if there's any symptoms of anything, we use this more often. And it really, you know, essential oils is one of those things where I was very skeptical. But when I committed to, okay, I'm gonna use this particular oil, immune strength, um, for several months and see, it, you know, don't change anything else, just use that and see if it works. And it really does help. So we don't get sick very often. And when we do, it doesn't last as long. So anyway, let me show you what this looks like here see you have this nice it's kind of watery it's like a watery syrup nice syrup and then i just take a teaspoon of this for the kids tablespoon for me and it works really well and it stores for a really long time you can freeze it by the way so if you make a bunch of big batches of this i would freeze them maybe in these um, pint jars get some you know freezer safe ones put them in the freezer and um, they will keep this recipe gives you um a couple quarts maybe a quart and a half and it lasts quite a long time especially if you just start using it at the sign of symptoms and then I keep using it until with all the kids and myself until everybody's healthy again so that way we get the maximum effectiveness of it so I probably have enough yeah it's about two quarts I have enough in here to fill up the rest of um, that with the rest of this would make one more quart. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for putting up with this busy, you know, sick, frazzled mama. And I hope you guys stay healthy. Okay, so <laughs> I thought I ended the video, but I had a little bit more to say to you guys. Um, it's funny because these more candid videos where I'm just walking around the house and doing my thing, you know, I've been chatting with um, my sweet friend, Jay Merle, from Large Family Table, and she was encouraging me, yeah, you should do that. It's, you know, it's great, and people really want to see real life, so I'm like, all right. <laughs> I mean, this is my real life. I'm a little frazzled. I'm a little, you know, my house is a little messy. I'm tired. I have no makeup. <laughs> but, you know, these things I'm hoping to share with you guys. I'm going to try to do more um day in the life kind of things for a busy homeschool mom of many and little tips like these that I can share that have been really helpful to me. And I hope they're a blessing to you. Um, I'll try not to apologize for my appearance in my house too much, all right? <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to show you guys something real quick because I said a few things in the video that I wanna correct. Okay, first of all, here I just finished pouring everything. And it really, this is filled up to the very tippy top, so I'll be have, to, have to be careful for a while opening it. But this is a, um, a quart and a pint. That is how much fits total from the batch I just made that I showed you guys. I went ahead and tasted this after having put, you know, because this was for the kids and this was for me, after having put a half of a teaspoon of ginger in this one, I was like, oh, you know, I could use more kick. So I went ahead and put another half teaspoon and now it's just right. So I put a, uh, or a fourth teaspoon. So I put a half teaspoon of ginger 
in a pint if you wanted to make some separate for just you. And you know, your kids might like ginger just fine. So if that's the case, you can just put the ginger directly into your um, instant pot when you go to cook it in the first place or use a, you know, peeled thing of ginger. So anyway, I hope that helps.